In the factory, three welded steel boxes will form the structure. This frame gets insulated, boarded out and finished right down to the electrics, wallpaper and even the tiles in the bathroom. These modules are then transported to site, craned into position and then bolted together to make a home that's ready to live in in just a matter of days. There'll be two bedrooms, one with a walk-through wardrobe and ensuite. This may be a single-storey dwelling, but the ceilings have been cleverly raised to give plenty of light and a sense of space in what will be a flexible, open-plan home. All in for the land and the construction of their home, they have a remarkably modest budget of just £220,000. So is this yours, this one? Well, ours is going to be very much like this. What made you go for this system? Peace of mind, basically. <laughs> if you can get that at all when you're building your own home. We know how much it's going to cost. That's not going to vary. All the internal details we've been going yeah. through with the stylist. Um, the stylist? Yes. <laughs> oh, look at that. From bare site to finished house in three weeks. Mind you, it is cheeky, isn't it? This way that the house pushes forward more than any other on the street makes up for its low height. It's an assertive little wedge. Actually, of course, it's a double wedgie. Oh. Godfrey's on the piano. That's a lovely sound. Hey. Hello. Hello. Uh, you're at home. <laughs> Well done, I can't. What, what a joyful moment this is. Nice to see Good you. Good to see you both, yeah. It's oh, what a place. This all took three weeks. Yes. Yes. This is unheard of. I mean, this is incredible. It's actually much bigger inside than you are led to believe. This is, uh, it's very, it's very luxy. This is, is this marble? It's a composite. Okay. Actually, which is quite hard wearing. Very nicely done. I do like the fact that you can stand at the sink and enjoy that view. That's right. It's quite meditative in a way, isn't it? You know, it's a relaxing thing to do first mm. thing in the morning or in the evening. Gives you another thing too, doesn't it? Which is a bit of supervision over the street. A bit yes. of, you know, you're able to sort of just That's see right. what's going on. Right, I'm going this way to look at the pod. Is that what you call it? Garden studio? Garden I think studio. studio is a better word yes. for it. It has the same DNA as Chris and Roxy's house because it was built from leftovers by their architect, wasn't That's it? That's right. I, I'm very heartened by the fact that you've been able to kind of borrow an idea that there's been a bit of cross fertilization between the buildings. Cross yes. Yeah, cross fertilization. Yes. A bit of self seeding going on. Yeah. <laughs> So how many bedrooms you got here? Two bedrooms. Enough for you and a guest, I guess, or I guests. Think so. Guest or guests. It's a flexible space. Yeah. yeah. This way. This way into the master bedroom. There's a dressing room and pocket doors everywhere in this house it means that the small spaces are really usable. You two. This is your uh, your billing workshop, is it? Yes, it is. Yeah, and you're not far from site here, which is very no, nice. No, 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 20 minutes. And tell me how you're making it, because I know you're using some really innovative techniques. Well, well relative... traditionally, in a way, I'd say. And maybe uh, innovative as well. Yeah, well, it's, in some ways, it's very, very straightforward. It's a timber frame. Yeah. But the hempcrete is slightly unusual. That goes round the timber frame. Yeah. Hemp is part of the cannabis family and farmed industrially in the UK. It looks like cannabis doesn't have the mind-altering properties. It's a sustainable crop with a wide variety of uses, from body oils and health food to livestock bedding and now construction materials. Paul will be using hemp shiv which is the chopped up woody core of the hemp plant. So basically we're going to mix the hemp fibre together with the lime and then 
hole, so it's lime or cement that we are mixing it with? It's lime. Lime, lime, lime. I, I've, just, I've heard this a lot of times. So, so basically lime plus the hemp plus water and when it's ready then we're going to pour it into the wall. Oh man alive! It's filthy but at 15 grand it's far cheaper than bricks and mortar and as eco-friendly a building method as you can get. But it takes time and it saps energy. How many buckets of water? Twenty tons of this material must be mixed and lugged over to the house and then packed by hand into timber shuttering. You just literally pour it in? Yeah. OK. When set, they repeat the process until exhausted. Layer upon layer of hempcrete will stabilise the timber frame and offer natural insulation and thermal mass. Worth doing. Worth building, isn't it? Definitely. Right now, yeah. When yeah. it's pouring with rain, sometimes I'm soaked to the skin, I think. Yeah. Actually, I just think it's still worth it. I bet you do. <laughs> when do you expect them to get it up, ready to move into? I don't know. I don't know. I've never built a house before. No idea how long it'll take. Yeah, longer than you think, usually, is the short answer to that. In order to get back on track, Paul's invited his neighbours to a hempcrete party. <laughs> It's just nice to be together and working together and so on. And you get to know people in a different way when you're working alongside them. With the best will in the world, me and one other person being on site is, is not very, not quick enough. So, yeah, this should speed things up. Hang on, it's coming down, it's coming up with goo now. It, it's a very easy material to work with. The... Do you know what it is? It's a... Uh... What, marijuana? Yeah, cannabis plant. Cannabis plant. It's uh, very therapeutic. <laughs> <laughs> and the aroma is wonderful. <laughs> Hi, hello, hello, Kevin. Paul, oh, how are you? Very well, hello, how are you? Hello. How are you? Hello. Um, good to see you both. I let myself in, because I'm so used to just wandering into these houses, forgetting, of course, that you're actually living here. Well, you're you know? always welcome. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Though I should have been a bit more formal, I guess. You've got a fire. I did think it might feel a bit hobbity, but no, it's cultured with intelligent natural material choices and the most gorgeous curves. So what's wrong with the place you're living now in Newbury? The biggest problem is we're renting. Um, we can't do anything to it. I can't even hang a picture on the wall without getting permission. Can you find um, a three-bedroom house to buy that you'd like there? No, no. Why we, not? It doesn't exist. Not in the area we want to live in. Jack hasn't employed an architect. He's designed the house himself, which he'll build from simple traditional block work, clad with slate grey boards and western red cedar. The ground floor will be open plan and include a study There'll be three bedrooms upstairs with an ensuite and dressing room. Jack's deliberately chosen materials he can build with himself, like his steel roof. And he's hoping this simple self-built route will save them a fortune on labour. Jack's struck on a way to eke out their finances by going scavenging. A colleague of mine called me up and, uh, and basically said, oh, we have some leftover materials, would you like them? And so I sort of came down and... We had a look, and this is exactly what we're, we're after. We've got one, two, three, four, five of those, so it's probably you know, 65, 75 pounds worth of material just thrown away here. So we'll have, we'll have that. I've always been a bit of a bargain hunter. I always, always like a deal. Joyce Tangers, probably eight or nine quid for one of those. We'll take them home and try and make a use for them. If your building materials come out of a skip, you need to be able to work with imperfection. Where are these for? These are, these are for our main floor, first floor steel. Oh, OK, so, so they're, they're... That's what they'll... Um, they slot into the steel. That's it, yeah. Steel's a reclaimed steel, so it's a bit wonky. Seriously, that it's steel has come off another project, has it? That was buried underground to stop a forklift going over a hole. So we pulled it out, um, Hannah rubbed it down and painted it up. And that's what you, that's what you see. Great, great. I'm just thinking of all this money being saved as a nice kitchen or a nice bathroom Yeah, well... End. Jack and Hannah do want a swanky kitchen. But true to form, Jack's not prepared to pay for it. He's found an ex-display model being sold on the cheap. 
It's a medium to high range kitchen. List price is probably around about 12,000 just for the kitchen itself. We paid 2,100 today. That includes the appliances as well. Do so, just trying to work out how to get it apart. It'll be a case of picking off the covers and seeing if there's a screw behind it and unscrewing it and seeing what happens. Really. Got it. Okay, if we spin it around, take it out there and spin it around. By not being proud, but shrewd, they've saved 10 grand on this kitchen. It seems to have come together quite nicely. Yeah. Drop it down. Hi, Hannah. Hi, nice to see you. And you, and you, this looks nice. It is as beautiful and sleek inside as out, and there is not a hint of scavenge here. <laughs> it's well hidden. In fact, probably every piece of furniture apart from what's in the lounge. <laughs> it's Seriously? Been yeah. Found yeah. somewhere. I thought this place might look like a turned out skip, but no. It's actually very refined, light, spacious, beautifully self-built. Uh, do you know how much you spent on this place? Including the land, we're at 281500 Which is really good value for what you got for the quality of finish. And that, but that's scavenging and doing all of this Oh, yourself. there's a lot, yeah. Well, I think I'd put, put pen to paper and I think it was about 137000 per 137000 if, we if we were to just hand this over to a firm, we reckon that's how much more it would have cost us. Jeez. Wow. They're understandably skint, and the house is in need of finishing touches. But what's remarkable is that aged 25, they've designed and built their own home. 